Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Let's start with a question from Gary. Hey Woody, firstly congrats on getting noticed by Roland, no mean feat in itself. So many questions being posed, some quite in-depth too. Good luck, you only have it for two weeks, lol. <laughs> yes mate, you hit the nail on the head. I have bitten off a bit more than I can chew. Now, when we did the introductory video for the D05, which we have here, I invited you to write comments, ask me questions, and I said I would read them all out on the show. Now, when I made that statement, I thought I was going to get 30 or 40 messages, but I ended up getting 300, and that's just on YouTube. There are a bunch of messages on, on the Facebook account and on Gmail as well, so I'm a little bit overwhelmed, and we obviously can't read them all out today. But what I've done is to cherry pick some and choose a whole bunch at random, so it's become a bit of a lottery. So please don't be mad at me or disappointed if I can't read your question or comment out, but I'm sure you understand. But as it happens, the comments section on my previous video, which I'll link to in this video, has turned out to be one of the best resources for the DO5 on the internet, I believe. We have 300 posts there, I can't think of any other forum thread with 300 posts, and a lot of helpful people have chipped in and answered the questions for me, so I do recommend you go and have a look at that. Anyway, today we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get stuck in. So the first topic we will address today is construction and controls. I'd like to know if the joystick for ANTS is even remotely usable, or if I'd be better off using an external controller. And can you send CCs to the DO5? Joystick for ANTS? It seems like you've decided already that you don't like it, and that's okay. But if you saw my previous video, then yes, you can see me using it to quite good effect. Let me demonstrate. It adjusts the balance between the different partials, and it's perfectly usable. Yes, I won't lie to you, it's not as good as the real D50, which is a bigger joystick and a smoother movement, and it allows you to do more precision movements on the real D50 as well, but this one's perfectly okay. Now, a couple of other people wrote in the comments that they've noticed a crackling noise when you move the joystick. And I have experienced that once or twice too. You can actually see it in my soundtrack demonstration in the previous video. But it's no big deal for me, it hasn't bothered me too much. But a valid observation nonetheless. And perhaps this is something that can be addressed in a firmware update. And regarding the second part of your question, yes, you can control this with an external keyboard or from your audio workstation. So Kieran wonders, must be built fairly well, reasonably solid. Yeah, totally. I've got no complaints whatsoever, and I'm really, really picky about this kind of thing. It's completely plastic construction, as far as I can tell, but built well, solid. The buttons feel good, the joystick, the LEDs, the screen, everything is fine. No worries there. Oh, and how long can you run it on batteries, says Walter. I have no idea. Old hem, are the buttons too tiny? Mm, they're small, but it's not a problem. Ron says, isn't only two octaves a bit limiting? Yes, it is. It's not the ideal size of keyboard for a D50 emulation, that's for sure. But it's okay just for doing demos with, and I've, as you saw, I was able to get quite good results in the last video. The thing is, with these two octaves, you end up playing everything in the key of C, which is a little bit strange, because you want that low C and the high C. But yeah, I mean, normally I think you'd hook this up to an external keyboard to get the most out of it. Deadline. I bought my DO5 last Saturday, but still have a ton of questions, like how you would change uh, reverb or create a patch from scratch. And why does my DO5 start up in P2 and not P1? Just the first things that come to mind. In the first 15 minutes of me playing with the DO5, I held the top of the little joystick in my fingers, no longer attached to the joystick itself. Nevertheless, the synth sounds awesome. Cool, thank you Deadline for your mini review. So he wants to know about editing it. We'll cover that a little bit later. I'll talk about that. Why does it start up on P2? Yeah, mine does that as well. You'd expect it to start on Fantasia, but it starts on P211. It's a pretty nice sound. I can only imagine Roland wanted to highlight some of the new sounds that they created for it. And this is a pretty cool sound. You had the joystick coming off in your hand. Okay, let's see if mine will the top of the joystick. Uh, mine's fine. Did you manage to get it back on again? Let me know. Hey Woody, I'd like to see the difference between the classic and modern modes. How those sliders on the side feel, how the built-in reverb compares to the original, how the joystick feels and how programming feels. 
I was not able to find that setting where you can switch between the classic mode and the new modern mode. Perhaps it's because this is a early prototype unit. This is not the production DO5, this is a prototype. And I just couldn't find that menu. I spent 20 minutes this morning looking and referring to the user manual, couldn't find it. So we'll have to skip that part of the question. The other parts of the question we will cover in some degree later on in the video. And then we have a question about each keyboard, the little two octave one and the A500. You know, this little two octave keyboard feels pretty nice actually for a two octave mini keyboard. I know you guys hate them, but it's got quite a nice action, <laughs> unbelievably. It's better than my JDXi, so they've done something with this one. And the A500, yeah, Roland have lent me another master controller MIDI keyboard, but I don't even know what it is and I haven't opened it yet. So we'll do a separate video about that. Okay, the next section, how does it sound? <laughs> and this is just a handful of the questions I've got. It's been really crazy. David wonders how much polyphony. I'm not sure exactly. It depends what sort of voices you're using, but I've never run out and it's the same as the original D50, I do believe. Layers, how many? You can layer together two sounds in a split or a layer. Effects, the same as the D50, you get pretty nice chorus and reverb. Does the DO5 have a patch called Goblins and can I hear it? I don't know yet. I'm going to do a separate video with some demos without me talking and the first patch I'll demonstrate will be Goblins if I can find it. Maybe do a brief recap of the history of the Roland D50. Yeah, we did that in a previous video. You should go back and watch my Roland D50 tribute videos because I talked a bit about their history. You also want to hear the partials. Yeah, I'm curious to do that as well. A topic for another video. David wonders, I'd like to hear the difference between the classic mode and the clean modern mode. Yeah, we addressed that previously. I can't find that setting. They replaced the 8-bit samples with 16-bit samples. Pietro, in some YouTube comparison videos, it's clearly noticeable that the old D50 and this reissue share the same identical sound, same samples and same CPU adapted to the new one. LA Synthesis. The only thing I'd like to know is if it's proper, the criticism of a guy which noticed in a comment that the old beast has a more widely panned sound. So basically he's wondering how it compares to the D50. Ryan says, I watched your D50 videos and that convinced me to buy one. The only regret I have is that D05 comes with like 900 patches. Can you export them and import them to the D50? No, I don't want to do that, Ryan, because I'm probably breaching some copyright, but I'm sure some other guy will do them. And if you Google hard enough, you can probably find the new patches. Is there a difference in sound quality between the DO5 and the Roland Cloud D50 plugin, assuming a half decent sound card on the computer? I don't hear any difference whatsoever between the sound of the DO5 and the legendary series plugin on the Roland Cloud. I'm convinced they're running exactly the same code, exactly the same algorithms, since you can download from the Roland Cloud many of the modern Roland synthesizers, the virtual analog synthesizers and the plugins for them. So it's exactly the same code. They sound exactly the same to me. However, it doesn't sound exactly the same as the D50, but I think we have a couple of questions on that coming up later. Pierre wants to hear the PCMs, the little bits of sampled material parts of the DO5. He'd love to find an, a small and easy to carry rompler that I can tweak in a substance manner. Yeah, I'll do a separate video where we listen to the little partials and talk a bit about the architecture of the D50. I don't have time to do it in this video today and I haven't done my research yet. Mr. Woody, how much would you rate DO5 sounds as compared to original sounds? 80, 90%, 100%. So this is the acid question, isn't it? And I'm sure many of you want to know the answer to this. And it's difficult for me to say because I don't have the D50 anymore. But I did do a comparison of the Cloud D50, the VST plugin, with my original D50. So perhaps refer to that one if you want to listen to yourself how they sound. Because as I said, I believe it's the same sound on the plugin as it is on this one. And you want me to say if it's 80, 90%, 100%? The thing is, some patches sound the same to me. Some patches sound worse. And Soundtrack is one. That's my favourite patch of all time. That's one that hasn't translated all that well to the 05. The attack part of the sound sounds great, but if you hold the key down and sustain it, then I think it does sound a little bit thinner. It's lacking the mushy warmth and the thickness of the D50. That brought me to tears when I did a demonstration of it. And then some patches sound better on this than they do on the D50. They sound better than I remember it. And the Fantasia patch is one of those. It's got a lot more sparkle, presence, high end and clarity on the DO5. It's much nicer to play on here than it was on the D50. 
So overall, I guess we're looking at somewhere between 90 and 95% of the sounds on this one, but that's my opinion. Your mileage may vary. This part of the sound doesn't sound quite as warm as the D50 to my ears. There. But you probably find these days that many D50s are starting to sound slightly different anyway, as the electrical components and the D to A converters and the amplification section start to deteriorate. So my D50 might not sound quite like yours anyway. Moving on to features. Martin on Facebook wonders, does it fix the two times eight patch button floor? I prefer one set of eight buttons on a plus minus key to select patches. Does it offer detune unison? Oh my gosh, so many questions. Let's just take the first one. Does it fix the, I don't know what that floor is that you're referring to. Yeah, so you just select your bank really. And then within that bank, you select which program you want. There are eight banks and then eight programs, eight patches in each bank. So that's 64 signs, but then you can change the card, the expansion card that's loaded as well. And you do that by pressing the button down there, the card button, and then the increment, decrement buttons. And then until you get to the bank you want. A little bit clunky, but it works. Lord Illuminata says, it sounds really good. Did you record the synth using direct outs? Really glad you asked me this. One of the things I really appreciate about this is the connectivity. I could use the output, which is unfortunately a three and a half millimeter jack, as many of you have complained about, but I didn't need to use that. I just connected it to the PC when I did my recordings with the USB cable. With one cable, I can send power to the O5. I can send and receive MIDI and send and receive audio. So with one cable, I was able to do everything I needed, which was really, really fabulous. So for me, the USB is a big win here, and that's what I used in my previous video. Chris wonders, can you transpose the DO5 when using it with a K25M? This has frustrated me. No, there are no quick octave up, octave down buttons at all. I believe it would have been better if they were integrated with the keyboard module on the left. And in fact, I would prefer this pitch bend mod wheel to be on the keyboard part of the instrument as well. So yeah, it's not easy to transpose up and down. And that's why I didn't do it at all in the last video. You've got to dive into the menus as far as I know, if you want to transpose it up and down. Okay, MIDI notes is complimenting me on the video, which is nice. Thank you very much for that. But the question here at the end is he's assuming it's not multi-timbral. No, it's not. The D50 was not a multi-timbral synth. It can play two sounds at the same time, but I'm not sure if it can do it on two MIDI channels. So this is not the thing you want to use if you want to build up an entire composition. Does it split the keyboard? Yes, it does. Many of the factory patches are splits. Also, can you upload patches for the D50 to it? We'll cover that later in a different section. So I hope I answered your questions there, MIDI notes, we'll, or I will do during the video. Alan Jenkins sent me a question. I know that's a fake name. That's why I'm reading out his surname. Can you connect a longer keyboard? Yes, you can connect any keyboard that has a MIDI output because this little D05 has a MIDI input. So that's easy enough to do. Nuclear shot. One problem with D05 is when you change to another patch and you play it quickly, you'll hear static scratchiness every time with headphones. Yeah, I can hear a little click there, but the solution to that problem is just not to change patches whilst you're playing. So a whole bunch of people were curious about the sequencer. Here's just a few of them. Xavier, Jeff, Matthew, Resonant Filter Blog, all curious about the sequencer. I haven't done the research and learned how to use it myself yet. So that's a topic we'll do in another video. Now then, we got a whole bunch of questions about editing. If this thing is easier to edit than the original D50, if it's compatible with external programmers and software and whatnot. And well, let me just say this about it. Editing the D05 using the front panel controls, the little window here and the cursor keys sucks. I just know that without even trying it and I don't want to try it. I hate editing these digital synths. For me, life is too short. I once heard it said that trying to edit the sounds on a digital synth is a bit like trying to paint the hallway through the letterbox. And I can totally relate to that. 
So on an instrument like this, my preference would be just to use the presets and other people's presets. And before you send me hate for being a preset monkey, let me remind you that my favorite synthesizer of all time did not have any presets at all. But I'm not interested in learning how to program this thing from the front panel. Not at all. I don't want to spend any time doing that, unfortunately. So you'll have to look elsewhere. And there's probably a reason why there are no YouTube videos showing how to edit this one, because nobody really wants to do it. I was kind of surprised how many questions I got about the editing. And what I would recommend is if you're really into that, use one of the software editors that are available for Windows, Mac, and I think even iPad. You'll have to do your own Googling there. But with the help of an editor, it's much more approachable and manageable, but I wouldn't recommend doing it on the front controls here. And if you're really into editing the sounds of the D50, your best bet might be to look at the VST version, to be honest. But anyway, I'm a little bit curious about this myself. I do like a bit of sound design. So in a future video, we'll investigate the architecture of the D50. Listen how you create a patch and maybe do some kind of tutorial, but I'll use the VST version of the D50 from Roland Cloud to do that because I don't want to do it on this one. Also, people were wondering if it's possible to use the PG1000 hardware editor to control the parameters on the DO5 and some knowledgeable people that have tried that setup have responded positively. So yeah, that's totally possible. I recently saw an interview by Eric Pershing where he was talking about how he created some of these iconic sounds for the original D50 synthesizer. And he laughed when the interviewer asked if he used the front panel controls. No, that wasn't an option. For Eric, he had the PG1000 controller as well. So I guess what's good enough for him is good enough for me. Okay, let me share some of your opinions. Mikkel is, is sobbing by the looks of it. Oh my God, what otherworldly beauty. The sound makes me sob. Tears of joy, that's nice. Hout says, I've been playing mine nonstop. The sequencer is a huge highlight for me. Yes, we will investigate that in a separate video. Kyle, this thing sounds massive. Seven people agree with him. Robin says, hello, Woody. I'm glad the folks at Roland were able to hook you up with the DO5. Yeah, thanks again, Roland. Well deserved. I just got one myself. It sounds wonderful, but the built-in speaker doesn't do it justice, so you really need a good external speaker to get the best experience. I'm looking forward to hearing more in the coming days. Cheers. Get rid of it ASAP. It's a remake, but no longer original. It sounds different. Thanks for that. Lex says it sounds great, but sorry, this whole movement of micro instruments by these mainstream companies so that they can just save on material costs is annoying as hell to me. Just release an upgraded D50, full size. I watch a lot of these videos with small synths and I can tell you that the common thread I have picked up on is a lot of missed or wrong notes while being played. The things are too damn small. Well, remember Lex, you can hook this up to any MIDI keyboard that you like. So the issue about the wrong notes being played on micro keys is mute really. Xavier, I think Roland did an excellent job with this one and the whole boutique series. Can't wait to see all the videos you're going to make with the DO5. Okay, thank you everybody. This is just a handful of the opinions. Sorry if I didn't read out yours. Okay, let's move on to the real meat and potatoes of this video. How does it compare to the D50? How would you compare the DO5 to a used D50 or D550, wonders Ari? as you could get the real thing with the same money. Exactly. Jason, would you rate it as a true replacement for the D50? I have been looking at some secondhand ones for about double the price. Thanks for another video, Woody. A bit off topic. Would you say that this thing has the warmth and character of real D50? Well, I said earlier that it was about 90% there, 95% there. Fluctris, I was looking at a D50, then this was released. Still worth hunting, or just get the DO5? Wow, now we're getting to the really interesting questions. I've thought about this a lot. Let's make a little list together. Wow, I was just about to make the list, but check out this awesome sunset. Let's list the pros of owning the real D50. What are the advantages compared to owning the O5? So the D50 has obviously earned its place in synthesizer history. This is a classic instrument and highly collectible today. So that's something that the O5 can't quite live up to. 
The construction of the D50 is second to none. This is a real pro quality built instrument. It has the best feeling key bed that I've ever played, period. No doubt the joystick on the real D50 is much nicer than the one that's on the 05. It's got a larger screen than the Boutique, which makes editing slightly easier and you can have longer patch names. I don't know why Roland didn't use it on the Boutique. It's got a slightly better user interface. It's nicer to have bigger buttons and everything is spread out there on a larger front panel. No denying that this original D50 has much more stage presence than the little Boutique, if that's important to you. The D50 has nice performance features built in, like the aftertouch, of course, and that pitch bend mod wheel stick. And as we discussed earlier, I think it does sound slightly better than the reissue. So these are the advantages of the D50 keyboard. The rack loses many of these advantages. Yes, it's a classic still pro quality. Yes, the key bed doesn't have one. Joystick doesn't have one. Larger screen, I think it does. The user interface is more cramped on the rack. Stage presence, non-existent. Control features, non-existent. The sound still may be slightly better than the Batik. So when comparing the D550 rack to the Batik, it becomes a lot closer. So the advantages of the Batik model then compared to the D50, let's go through those. The D50 is a beast to lug around. The D05, well, when I picked it up from Roland, I just put it in my shoulder bag and carried it home on the train. I didn't even notice it was there, to be honest. It was so light. It's compact as well, which might be an advantage for you. It takes up very, very little room in your studio. It's got some new features like that little built-in step sequencer. The connectivity is much improved over the D50 or at least modernized. Yes, you lose the proper jack outputs and you get a three and a half millimeter thing instead, but the USB is a huge win for the D05. I calculated that a D50 in today's money would be about $4,000 and Roland are selling the D05 at just 400. That's about 10 times cheaper, which makes it a bit of a bargain, really. So as many of you pointed out, the price of the new boutique is the same as a used D50. But ask yourself carefully, would you rather have a beat up used 30 year old keyboard or something brand new with a warranty? And yes, it runs on batteries as well. It's got a built in speaker, but you probably don't want to use it. As we touched on earlier, if you buy a boutique today, it's going to be brand new and in mint condition. Good luck if you want to try and find a D50 in mint condition. It's probably going to be quite beat up, scratched up and a little bit manky. I know mine certainly was. So availability. Did I spell that right? Yes, yes. That's a biggie. If you want to buy a D05, you can go out this afternoon if the shops are open and buy one or you can order one from Amazon. But if you want a D50 on the other hand, you might be waiting weeks or even months or years before you find a good one. So availability, the D05 wins hands down. So sure, you can find expansion cards for the D50 or you can use MIDI to transfer new sounds to the D50. But the D50 only had 64 sounds. The D05 has hundreds. All of these expansion cards are built in plus a whole bunch of new sounds for 2017 which is a really compelling feature. So these are the advantages of each instrument, at least the ones I can think of right now. And there might be more, so please let me know in the comments if I've forgotten anything. Yes, Woody, you idiot. You forgot one really important thing. And it's the reason that I sold the D50, or at least one of the contributing factors to my decision to sell it. And that is reliability. I'm really concerned about these 30 year old synthesizers how long they're going to last for without you needing to do quite a lot of maintenance. I'm also into the arcade, the sort of retro arcade, retro PC thing, where I see a lot of guys struggling with 30 year old hardware that's starting to fail. At that age, some of the electrical components go bad. Things like capacitors go bad. The power supplies go down and even some integrated circuit, you know, the microchips are starting to fail as well at about 30 years. So, if you own a D50, then great, but you might need to do some maintenance on it in the future and need to know how to handle a soldering iron. Otherwise, you're going to get some pretty high maintenance costs. It's just a matter of time before those buttons fail. We, we all know, if you've owned a D50 recently, that the buttons are temperamental. The screen is eventually going to fail. The same thing applies for keys and the aftertouch. So, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but that's certainly a big advantage for the D05. 
And of course, I can't really recommend which to get. It all depends on you. You need to decide for yourself which of these features is most important and matters the most for you. And naturally, we have a bunch of people wondering how it compares to the VST version available on Roland Cloud. Michael wonders, as good as the emulation? I assume you mean the VST. Roland Cloud versus this boutique, what do you think? Does it have any new fresh patches which are not on the Cloud version? You know, I haven't checked. Maybe someone can chime in in the comments there. Nathan loves my channel. Cheers, buddy. So my question, I own a Korg M1 Yamaha DX7. Wow. I just need the Roland D50 to finish off the trio. Yes, you certainly do. So do I buy the D50, the D05 or Roland's online software? I'm being pulled towards the original D50. Yeah, in your case, Nath, definitely. If you've got the real Korg M1, real Yamaha, you sound like you want to have the big three there. So in your case, D50 all the way. Good luck finding a nice one. Ernesto says, great video, Woody. I would love to see a comparison of the D05 and Roland Cloud VST. I don't know if I'm going to do a comparison, but take my word for it. They sound the same. Mr. Zappa, how would you rate this against the VST? Are the ergonomics of the physical unit worth paying for, in your opinion? It's 350 quid in the UK. I love this question too. There are pros and cons, of course. Let's go back to the list and we'll add an extra column with the VST version. So let's make a third column with the advantages that we can think of of the VST over the D05 and the D50. So the first item that comes to mind is cost. The VST is $30 a month, I think. And in fact, the first month is free. So maybe for some of you, that's enough. If you just want to experience the D50 and the fabulous sounds, go sign up for a free month and you're done. Yeah, obviously the VST wins over the other ones for integration with your digital audio workstation. It's multi-timbral in that you can launch as many instances as you want on different tracks, meaning that you can build up a whole composition with the sounds of the D50, something you can't do with the other options. Obviously, it takes zero space in your studio. Ease of editing is where the VST really shines over the other two options. Roland have done a pretty nice job on the user interface. So there you have it, Woody's summary of the advantages of the D50 versus the D05 and the VST. Once again, you'll have to figure out for yourself which of these is most important for you. Right, the next topic, system exclusive and presets and patches. So Digi wants to know if the D50 can read SysX files from a D05 and vice versa. Well, many people in the comments have responded that the D05 will read D50 SysX files, no problem at all. But I haven't seen anything about doing it the other way around, if the D50 can read patches created on the D05. So perhaps someone can help me out with that in the comments. Are the user banks empty to begin with? Yep, some of them were, I noticed that. Maybe play some of the new Bank 2 signs. Yes, Alan, we're gonna do that. That's a great topic for a video. I'll do a demonstration just playing, no talking, and we'll do some of these new signs for 2017. Another Alan says there's supposed to be a retro mode where it sounds grungier. Yeah, this is the mode I couldn't find. If I do discover that, then I'll do a separate video on the topic. Triton Recordings then. He's got a great channel. You should go check that out. Roland let me have one for a bit. Almost made a synth stuff episode for it, but I made sure to grab the SysX data so I could put some of those brand new patches on my D50. Okay, interesting. Here we have a guy who has the 05 and the D50 and he's suggesting that it is possible to load the sounds on the D50. Well done. Does it come with an editor? No, it does not, but you can use the existing editors without any problem at all. Ara says, can you explore some of the features that are not standard on the D50, some of these extra sound cards? Yeah, I haven't had time to explore them myself yet, but when I do, I'll record a video and we'll upload that. Can you export its patches and use them on the real D50? Apparently you can. Please, can you export the new D05 sounds to SysX so I can import them? No, I'm not prepared to share those, but I'm sure someone else will do that for you. Ping Pong 85, are original SysX files compatible? Yes, they are. I'd like to load some Valhalla series patches I have saved. Yeah, go for it. Let me know how it works out for you. So of course, <laughs> of course, people want to know, will I buy one? Mike, for example, question, are you planning on buying one of the boutique synths? Okay, boutique synths in general. You are very lucky. My question is very simple. Will you buy one for you, yourself? Remember that I had a real D50 that I sold just six months ago. So I'm not really tempted to buy another unit that sounds just the same. I feel 
that we've done enough of the D50 already and now I'm ready to move on and cover some other synthesizers. You see, as I'm running a YouTube channel here, a lot of the synthesizers I buy, I'm not just buying it for myself, but I'm buying them for you guys, the viewers, because I'm trying to get instruments that I think you will be interested in. We've covered the D50, we've now covered the D05, so no, I'm not gonna be buying one. But on the other hand, I've got no hesitation in recommending this unit to anybody that really does want to enjoy and experience the science of the D50. Okay, as usual, we have some funny off-topic posts. I'm gonna share just a few of them. Dev Tank, can I use this with a Roly Seaboard? Yeah, as far as I know you can, and I think a commenter responded to you there. Sure, this thing responds to CC, so you just map up your Seaboard to whatever you want. Strange, this isn't really about the Roland, but do you have an opinion about the Micro Korg? Well, I used to own one, and it didn't blow me away, and that was 10 years ago, so I don't think it's gonna blow me away today either. Owner says, hi Woody, are you using for playing only these small desktop speakers or is there some big subwoofer under the table? So I have a Logitech 2.1 system. There are two speakers here on the desk and a subwoofer over there in the corner. It sounds really awesome actually. I don't remember the exact model number. I did a separate video a long time ago on using this rig with your keyboards. So go check it out. But it's a really nice home system for your keyboards and your computer. That flowery biscuit cake tin is a monitor stand though. Yeah, I got heaps of comments about my monitor stand over here. And another question, can you compare synth signs of DO5 to FA0678 and Integra Supernatural synth signs? Which one do you prefer? So remember this, the D05 is emulating a 30 year old synthesizer and we have come a long way in 30 years. And although we all love the sounds of the D50, I think the sounds on the Integra the Phantom and this Roland FA unit that you mentioned are gonna pretty much blow away <laughs> this little D05. David says, tell Roland he needs to make an MX2 mixer with more ins and bus power. I just did that for you. Digi, Kaboo, Holy, Le Monde et Petit, small world as we say here, I saw him in Namur, but I'm wondering if the D50 could read a SysX files from D05 unit, we talked about that. What else, why is this off topic? Congrats for playing on these little keys. Struggle a bit with my JDXI. Wow, great comment. Thank you. Thankfully, unlike the other boutique instruments, this one actually has 16 notes of polyphony. Blankety blank Roland for limiting the Juno and Jupiter boutiques to four notes. So yes, we got a question earlier about if I was going to buy one of the other boutique synthesizers. And the answer to that is yes. As soon as Roland make the Jupiter module eight note poly, and the Juno module six note poly, I'll buy them both. Oh, and by the way, the Roland guys that I've spoken to are really passionate about their synths, just like you and just like me, and they know about this. Question, is there a cake in the cake tin? Hmm, for when reading your comments. Tyros Matt says, are you on a bouncy chair? Apparently, just by playing some of these synthesizers with a goofy expression on my face, I'm able to help boost sales, which is really awesome. Other manufacturers take note. If you want to collaborate with me, then hit me up on woodypianoshack at gmail.com. Okay, that's all we have time for today, but thank you so much for all of the questions on my previous video. And I'm really sorry that I was not able to feature every single comment in today's video, but I think you understand it would have just been too much. But you've given me a few topics for future videos as well, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching this one. Thanks for subscribing, all of your support, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.